All right, Ali, stick with us because for more on this to talk about what this means for the industry, we want to bring in IMAX CEO Richard Gelfand joining us here in studio. Richard, it's great to have you. So let's talk about that very strong film slate that we do have ahead for the next couple of weeks. So we have Wakanda Forever. We also have the Avatar sequel. What do you think, or I guess how big of a catalyst do you view this to your industry? Well, I'll start with IMAX, then I'll go to the industry. I mean, IMAX is in the blockbuster business, and a small number of movies make or break our year. And um, we're counting on this period um, to really uh, provide jet fuel mm -hmm. to our company. I think it's going to be fantastic. I heard the description of the positives and negatives, but maybe the most important thing is I saw the movie last night in IMAX, and people were going crazy. I think it really works very well. I think they did have a difficult balance between uh, Chadwick Bosman's death and how to go on with the franchise. And I think they did a remarkable job in, in, in doing that. Um, I think the playtime is two hours and 40 minutes, as she said, a little bit longer than the first one. On the other hand, people aren't focusing on um, Thanksgiving is during the third week of this. And it's really very much a family movie. So if it chops anything off the opening weekend, you know, that's a huge mo uh, weekend for movie going and no other big movies opening then. So I think, I think it's going to be a very big success. I'd be very surprised if it wasn't a success. And then I'm um, talking about Avatar afterwards. I mean, Avatar is close to the highest grossing movie of all time. It really brought in the 3D era. It made a huge difference for IMAX. It's still our biggest grossing movie of all time. We did at the time, we've done more since, but $250 million in about 250 theaters. And now we have 1,800 theaters. So I think it's a, it's a different game for us. And I think the fourth quarter right now is going to demonstrate people coming back to the movies in, in, in fairly large numbers. And then um, um, next year is also a very good year. And, and Richard, you know, these two films, they seem to come at that important time, considering that lack of new content that we've seen. And in your latest earnings report, you actually credited those local language films in helping lift revenue. I'm curious how the reliance on the international box office has shifted post-COVID, especially as we've seen the Hollywood pipeline slow down a little bit. Well, there were two reasons why we really uh, focused more on local language films. One was the pipeline, as you say, slowed down and you needed to program something. And in fact, um, in the last two years, the biggest movies in the world were out of China and they were each filmed with IMAX cameras and re released by IMAX. But the last quarter, 30% of our um, box office came from outside of North, um, came in local language films. And that became really important because as you know, it was a weak quarter for Hollywood releases. And, Whereas a few years ago, people in Japan or India or China would have said, um, well, IMAX shows Hollywood blockbusters in our country. That's what they do. But now when they wake up in those countries, they say, you know, let's see anime in Japan or let's see a big musical in India or whatever it is in China in IMAX. So I think, I think we're on the le leading edge of this. I think there's much more to come in terms of the globalization of box office. We're trying to be the leaders in that. Yeah, Richard, certainly a lot to be encouraged about right now, but it is a tough macroeconomic backdrop. When you have high inflation, you have the strong U.S. dollar, obviously a potential headwind here for your business. How are you navigating those risks? And I guess if we do see a recession, how big of a headwind do you see that being for IMAX? Well, historically, the movie business has been relatively recession resistant. Mm -hmm. One of our biggest growth years was 2008 in our history. And I think during every one of the recent recessions, we've grown. Um, I think the weaker, the stronger dollar, weaker, lower currencies, when you translate them, mm -hmm. um, does lower the global box office. On the other hand, most of the countries have compensated with higher ticket prices there. I, you know, um, we like to say IMAX is an affordable luxury. It really feels like you got away. It's, you, it's like going on a vacation without having to take the kids and pay so much for a hotel room. So I think people will cut back on uh, maybe going to expensive restaurants, maybe going on vacations, but that sense of immersiveness and wonder, um, you know, for less than $20 is still going to hold up well, I think. 
And Richard, Disney earnings were out earlier this week. We saw greater losses within its direct-to-consumer division. As investors shift focus to profitability, how do you think media giants like Disney and even a company like Netflix will utilize theaters and those box office dollars to potentially offset those accelerating streaming losses? Or, or will they? Are we there yet? Well, the facts are uncontrovertible, which is when something is shown in a theater first and especially in an IMAX theater, and then it goes to streaming, it does much better. So one of my favorite examples is Top Gun Maverick um, was released theatrically, and as you know, did over a billion and a half dollars. And when, you, um, uh, when it went to streaming platforms, it became the number one digital release of all time on its early platforms. So that billion five not only didn't distract from the streaming revenue, it added to it. So almost every um, streamer has now said they recognize the need for a theatrical release. Um, Netflix is the one that's held back a little bit, but even Netflix is releasing Knives Out 2 um, theatrical for a week, and then it's going um, kind of off screen, and then it's going to Netflix. So I just don't think the debate's over. The, I think the debate is over, that the argument that you can skip a theatrical window and make up for it on um, streaming just isn't true. The theatrical window is more essential than ever to get the streaming revenue. Yeah, certainly very important in the industry, and I think recent results have proven that. Richard Gelfand, always great to have you here on Yahoo Finance. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here, and even better in person. I love to have you in person. We hope to, that you join us back here in studio um, soon. I'm going to move in. There Don't we worry. go. There we go. We love that answer. Even better. Makes it easier.